Okay, so here we are at our uh, our next moment, our next video. Um, just to give you a kind of update in, on where we are at the moment. Um, the Turbo, the GTB1752, is now fitted, as you can see. Um, it's a perfect fitment for the standard manifold. Um, standard downpipe and everything else can fit straight onto it. Um, there are obviously a few custom items, but nothing too awful, if I'm honest. You've got a, a custom feed for the oil into the turbo, um, which just like the standard one runs from the top of the rocker cover and then goes straight into the top of the turbo. Um, that one comes with the kit. So if you were to buy one of these, um, you would find that, that that feed would come with it. Quite simply, you know, unbolt one, put the new one on, simple as. Um, we've got a slightly modified pipe for the intercooler. Obviously on the standard turbo, the compressor housing is quite small. The outlet from the compressor is also quite small. Um, obviously with this having a bigger compressor on it now, um, the pipe is bigger and therefore obviously we need to change things ever so slightly just so that we can fit it onto the standard intercooler. Now the standard intercooler on these is a reasonably large item. Um, it's quite well positioned in the front bumper to get quite a lot of cool air into the intercooler, which is obviously, you know, part of its job. So this turbo can be used with the standard intercooler without too many issues. Obviously, if you're, um, you know, if you're sensible, then at some point you might consider uh, increasing the size of the intercooler. Um, but certainly, you don't have to. Um, this one here has got a DPF delete pipe um, made from um, an Astra version. Um, this this DPF delete pipe here is the Astra type. Uh, there isn't one currently available for the Insignia. Um, I've made things a little bit different. So what I've done is I've actually welded a bracket onto the DPF pipe, which bolts it to the block. Um, the main benefit of that is instead of having uh, potentially some flex in the downpipe, which could ultimately lead at some point to the failure of this joint here, and obviously an exhaust blow, Welding on a bracket which bolts it to the engine means that the only flex in the exhaust is at the flexible joint where it should be. Um, I've also welded on a, a small bracket just there as well. Uh, the reason for that is so that I can put on the standard heat shield. So the, 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 the standard DPF has a heat shield which goes over the top of it, uh, mainly to protect from heat, because obviously when the DPF is regenerating, it does create a great deal of heat. Um, this obviously doesn't have a DPF, but in order for it to pass MOT, it has to look like it has a DPF. So that bracket's been welded on so that the heat shield can go on over the top of this. The heat shield comes up to about here and completely covers this entire section. So an MOT tester, when he's looking at it, is literally just going to look like it would do um, as standard, okay? Uh, obviously, they've got the piping down here that we talked about earlier on. Uh, the There is an adjustment now for the VNT actuator, which has been fitted. Um, that shouldn't need to be adjusted by anybody other than the person building the turbo, which is me. Um, so if anybody buys one of these turbos, it is a plug and play unit. It's just simply a case of taking the old one off, bolting the new one on and off you go. Um, obviously, it does require mapping to make maximum use of the power available. Um, just to be uh, just to be on the safe side, fitted an additional oil catch can. The oil catch can, as you can see, is, is here. Obviously, this bracket needs to be correctly positioned and painted. We've got another section of pipe to go in there, which is uh, a little bit better. And obviously, the two Jubilee clips need to be fitted. So it's all kind of like snagging list type stuff. Uh, but, you know, it is drivable. I have driven the car. Uh, it has had its first remap. It is quick. It spools better than the actual original turbo. So the standard turbo starts to produce boost around sort of 2100 RPM. Um, this turbo produces boost around 2000 RPM and might even do it a little bit earlier with some additional mapping, but that's yet to be yet to be um, proven. So I'm not gonna say that yet. Okay, um, so everything is working incredibly well. I'm really happy with the outcome. 
what we've got here is we've got a turbo which doesn't produce massive numbers you're going to be talking about 235 brake horsepower probably around sort of 450 460 newton meters um, so we can retain all of the stock sensors that's not a problem we don't have to start changing clutches or anything like that but it gives us more power and more power earlier in the rev range and it takes us all the way to the red line um, the, the issue sometimes with the insignia is it, it, it can sort of tend to run out of puff a little bit when you start to get towards the red line um, it, it's really really drivable it's really 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 quite impressive um, the, the power is is lovely and it's usable which is which was our main main intention with this to produce something which was plug and play simple for your average guy on the street to fit uh, a direct replacement for the standard version and yet does give you a very usable and decent power increase